right? So what does this mean for different holding periods, all right? So for the insurance company, if what we do is it buys bond A, all right, and it holds it for one year, okay, and the interest rates stay at 10%, the bond price won't change. It will be worth $100 at the end of year one. However, if interest rates change and they go to 8%, okay, the bond will be worth more. The bond itself would be sold for more because interest rates have gone down. On the other hand, if interest rates go up okay, at 12% to 12%, the bond value goes down, interest rates go up, bond value goes down, and be worth something less than $90, all right? So you can see in terms of bond value, okay, you're better off if interest rates go down and, or, and worse off if interest rates go up. But let's look what happens over time for the bond value. So this is assume you hold it for the period and what you're going to do is sell the bond at the end of the period. We go out here and if we look at what happens to the 8%, with the interest rates just shift to 8%, we can see that basically the value of the what we're going to get for the bond goes down to 100 because we get 100 at the end. Same thing true is true of the 12% where it basically will start going up because at the end we get to 100. All right? So that's just the bond value. So if I hold the bond for five years, this is what I would get if interest rates are 8%. This is what I would get if interest rates are uh, 10 percent, and this is what I would get if interest rates are 12 percent. Now let's look what happens to the coupon payments. Now if we look at the reinvestment value of the coupon values by holding period, as we can see, as it goes up here, the notion here is you have, you've deposited more dividends and they accumulate in more value, but look at what happens. Over time, if I'm only able to reinvest at 8 percent, the accumulated value of the dividends is less, and if I'm able to reinvest at 12%, the accumulated value of the dividends is worth more. So before, what we had was, oh, a shift to 8%, the bond values go up, shift to 12%, bond values go down. On the other hand, a shift to 8% means we have left, less from reinvesting the coupons at 8% and have more from reinvesting the coupons at 12%. So if I combine what we had in terms of the bond value plus the value of the reinvestment coupon, reinvested coupon payments, what we have is something that looks like this. And what we could see is early on, we benefit, this is the combination of bond value and reinvested coupons, and what we have is early on, oh, we're better off if interest rates shift to 8%. Worse off if they shift to 12% because, the, because of the bond value change. On the other hand, as we go through time and we get out here, what we could see is, oh, the combination of the bond value and the coupon reinvestment at 8% is less than 10% or what it would have been at 12%. Basically, what we see is while the bond value would go up for the 8%, all right, and the reinvestment rate coupon uh, would be less, somewhere around year six and seven, they seem to balance each other out and that the payoff of whether the interest rates are 8%, 10% or 12% seems to be the same. So let's do this. So what I did is I just made it a smooth line here. Okay, and what we could see is the total value. And actually, if we really look at it, we see that at some point, this point around between six and seven years, all uh, right, we regardless of what happened to interest rates, the payoff would be the same for bond, the coupon bond A, at about six to six and a half years, all right? So basically, at about six and a half years, the gain and losses in bond value exactly offset by gains or losses in coupon reinvestment, such that the accumulated value is the same as if the interest rates had stayed at 10%. What's interesting is this six and a half years. Well, it turns out, that if we calculate the Macaulay duration for uh, bond A, it turns out that the Macaulay duration uh, for the 10-year bond with a 10% coupon with semi-annual payments and a yield to maturity of 10% is 6.54 years. However, we have a liability in years 10 and years 6.5. So in one sense, if we sort of look at the Macaulay duration in this case, where it's 6.5 years, if we wanted to minimize our reinvestment rate risk for bond A, we just hold it for, for 6.54 years.